Snow Country, 1957, Shiro Toyoda, a magnificent feature film. Cinematography by Jun Yasumoto adorns this magnificent screenplay, penned by Toshio Yasumi and based off of the novel of the same name by Yasunari Kawabata. Narratively, Snow Country might make for a strong novel, although as a filming experience it transcends its narrative and becomes a testament to visual storytelling, really more so than, or more notably than, it is a film about exploring its character's pathos. I note one IMDb reviewer, of the two listed, is disappointed that the film was not sufficient at conjuring the emotional prowess of the source text, which I cannot speak for. I've not read the text, and I'm unsure if an English translation would impart any rhetorical majesty which the novel in Japanese might possess. Meanwhile, as a piece of filmmaking, Snow Country can be seen as belonging to a tradition of Japanese cinematic dramas about the tragedy of a geisha's existence. Plausibly downstream of Kenji Mizuguchi, narratively, we could perceive Shiro Toyota's Snow Country as a director's attempt to experiment aesthetically with this rather elegant, artistic cultural form. Shiro Toyota has directed far more films than I have seen from him, although the handful I have were very impressive, though likely picked out by prior, more dedicated canaries as his better works, mind you. Snow Country is one of the more striking and impactful, certainly visually, of 1950s Japanese dramas, a true monument to how a narrative can be evolved, elevated, by precise, considered, evocative staging. I'm unsure if the film is shot on a set or in an actual rural snowy town. If it is a set, it is very convincing, and if it is an actual village, I applaud their efforts at conveying gorgeously its majesty. Another geisha drama this may be, Although it is one of the most aesthetically grand ever realised, among the more arresting black and white films of the 1950s in general, it doesn't explore beyond the parameters of its genre perhaps, although it might just perfect it from a film production perspective. Kaiko Kishi's performance as Komako is just perfect. She delivers a role of subdued, believable normalcy, and by normalcy I mean it isn't overly expressive, theatrical or animated. The opposite of scenery chewing, it is perhaps the most impressive of acting performances that of illustrating an unsure, multifaceted, inconsistent, aspiring for fulfillment, a regular example of a human being, so to speak. You could meet people like Komako out in the world, her disposition is graceful, yet her circumstances are potentially demeaning, or at least not to her liking, not her ideal dimension. Kaiko Kishi's performance as Komako is heartbreakingly true to life. She finds one great solace, so much solace, in the expectations of another's kindness, and she sacrifices everything she then has in order to ensure a life with that other human. But when their fantasy does not come to pass, Komako is beset at not specifically knowing Shimomura's lack of love for her, but rather that she never truly knew what he was thinking at all, and never will. And so while she could trust herself to identify her more miserable circumstances as potentially imprisoning, she couldn't rely on her hopes and ideals to identify a rightly positive circumstance either. She feels as though she must have been delusional and was so incentivized by a particular possible outcome that it blinded her from seeing the scenario clearly. One could imagine the tale being told as a client who falls in unrequited love of a sex worker, although here it is almost the opposite. And I say almost because it isn't as though Shimomura has no love for Kamako, otherwise he would have just said that. He implies more so that he has feelings for her but does not wish to be involved in a relationship with her. Why? At the film's introduction, we assume we will be following Shimomura throughout the narrative, but rather it becomes Komako's thought processes, data of consciousness, which we, which we are invited to observe. However, although the viewer is teased with some information about Shimomura prior to being introduced to Komako, this is only to keep us in anguish, not unlike Komako. Though we might know more than Kamako, we will never truly know what is going on in Shimomura's mind. Perhaps he doesn't either. In a sense, we only know Kamako's because she revealed them in intimate conversations with Shimomura. And I think that's another thing that destroys her emotionally. That she, she was willing to offer all of this personal emotional intimacy to Shimomura, and she feels as though, in return, she knew nothing of him. A very moving film, rather heavy days.